Yo, what is going on family? We are here. We are here today for responding to the videos. And then after this video, we will go into MFO, which if you guys haven't guessed, some of you guys have guessed, and uh, I think about two people guessed it correctly. It's going to be about Pokemon. <laughs> it's going to be about Pokemon. So one of the things that I wanted to do in this video specifically, videos about metas and stuff like that, I try my best to actually avoid talking specifically about Exos. I might have mentioned gotchas every once in a while, uh, but there were still people that were like very about Exos. And I, I want you guys to know that this version or this series is not always going to be about mobile games. I might mention them because uh, it's really big on the channel and I want to correlate that, like some of the discussion topics uh, to those people, but I also want to talk to those people that happen to play other games as well Like people that play a fighting game or a card game that also play mobile games because sometimes me and my friend We we theorize that there's a possibility that some people don't play other games It was a, it's more of a joke like oh these guys only play mobile games even me Like I started to go away from playing console games and just playing mobile games for a while And I feel like when you do do that you kind of get sucked into a vacuum in which you don't understand that certain games could actually be made better, certain games can be done better, certain games are worse. Um, and, and again, like you can like comparing a gotcha game possibly to fighting game. Like some people are like, nah, you can't really do that. It's like, no, you actually could. There's crazy similarities of, of their techniques and stuff like that and what they do. So this uh, response video is gonna go through a couple. I got six comments that I really liked and I'm gonna go through those and I hope you guys enjoy the video. So what's going on guys it's your boy cash this video is not mfo this is ufo this is you guys <laughs> your fucking opinions um as i would like to say or unidentified fucking opinions but we identify y'all that's right i'm putting y'all on blast <laughs> and i wanted to go through them and just quickly discuss them and you know have a nice little thing and that's what's gonna go so every time you guys see a video like this responding to the comments uh a mfo is going to follow up so yeah let me take this first comment that i fucked uh Navic von Bathory. <laughs> uh just a heads up, I did cut off the bottom part of your thing because it started going a little bit into Exos. Um like a very you asked me a specific question about Exos, which has nothing to do with the thing, it was a separate comment. Hope you don't feel disrespected by that. <laughs> anyway, in my opinion, metas are fine. I understand that you simply go by the meta that that could mean a lack of creativity, but hey, that's why we need people like you to see if meta can be shifted. I come at I come at it mainly from a car player point of view hearthstone legends of runeterra and i only have so much time and i tend to play multiple games so i'm happy to take advantage of the work others have done in determining what are great decks i've always hated the idea that net deckers are dumb players they're not they're just pilots versus deck builders i still remember working second shift and in the downtime writing up ideas for uh, magic of the gathering mtg decks uh those were the days but i put a lot of time into deck building back then i don't really miss or want to put that kind of time into it again. That said, depending on the meta, going anti-meta can often leave your opponent at a loss as to what to prepare for, again, more focused on decks. I also play Overwatch where there is a definitely an ever-shifting meta, but if you're incredibly good, you can transcend the meta that's not me. In an EXO standpoint, EXO's hero standpoint, I feel like First Guardian's abilities are so crazy it's hard to deviate. It's up to the devs over time to add abilities that start to allow for more counterplay. Very curious about the new gold fake course for that reason. Now I'll explain a lot what he's saying about like he that's a one a really 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 good comment because metas like I think I don't know how much I've said I honestly don't remember half the shit I said in, in my original video. But the, the cool thing about a meta the cool thing about it right because that's kind of where i wanted to contrast like even though i'm saying like the metas are bad but there is a cool thing about a meta where you can find out what's standard you can find out what's good when people start for wow when people start playing the game uh they look to a meta to know what's good and then you can fight against it uh you know quote unquote fight against it or, or find ways to beat it and things like that but once the meta is established it's something that established that is the best thing as he's mentioning here that he used to be a, a deck builder a deck builder versus a um a net decker uh usually they're almost the same person uh usually the deck builder comes first they make a deck and that deck turns out to be really good and then people net deck it which means that they go online and find out what the best deck in the game is or the most effective deck and then they copy it. Now, sometimes there are multiple decks that they're copying. It just goes to show you that, like you said, some people think that deckers are dumb. They think that they can't, they don't know how to do it. 
but they just rather take the best deck and learn the game or just abuse how uh, strong it is they're not necessarily looking to deck build because they might not be good at that and a lot of things that he said here oh I, I play overwatch you can change the meta you can play wherever you want but i'm just not good at that so for him it's better for him to use the meta because he can't go off meta i think i pick another comment uh, that's similar to that like i can't go off meta i have to pick one some of the best characters based on my own skill set so there's no purpose of me doing all this other stuff and you know quote unquote like just losing i'm, I'm not gonna win and a big part of a lot of people's fun is winning it's not it's not um not that many people can find the enjoyment through losing a bunch of times because they wanted to test something out me personally i can't do that i can i can take some losses you know but it's kind of hard to be like i'm gonna lose i know i'm gonna lose or i have a high chance of losing let me do that like so I, I really like this comment and that's also when he speaks about exos heroes it's like the same thing they, they created something very strong in the beginning and i think a lot of mobile games do that they make something very strong very wanted and then if there's a pvp meta to it they usually have to go against that very strong thing to balance out the game that's usually how that works they usually have to make it and it just depends on how scummy they do it <laughs> <laughs> is it something like a system that they added into the game that you can interact with is it a unit or is it uh you know premium currency like paid currency it just depends on how they put it into the game that's going to make you not like or like it a lot you know that's how it is right now they're doing it by summoning summoning is accrued by resources in the game so therefore technically right now nothing is paywalled in exos heroes so that's why it's a little bit funny or curious how we how it's going to turn out we're, we're not really exactly sure right now all right, so next comment. My man, Ihazalev, probably said, probably meant it in a completely different way. Um, so he says, I played SWGOH for like two years. I feel like I knew what that meant back then <laughs> when, I, when I clipped it. Can someone inform me? But he just says, uh, for two years, the metal was always really broken and the same team was unbeatable for like six months. It was horrible. And when a new team became meta, it was always locked behind a huge paywall. And this is what I was talking about. Like, and it sounds like he's talking about a gotcha game, but like, this is the problem is that it's okay. Well, one, six months is terrible. If you don't change your meta for six months, unless there's honestly a lack of creativity or a lack of effort on the community to change it. Like there's really like, sometimes I, I do, I, what is that? I stick my nose up and I'll say like, you guys aren't trying hard enough. Like when like, when I used to play Nice Chronicles and people couldn't beat the a, a new dungeon that just dropped that day and they couldn't beat it because their meta units didn't work and it's like, bro, it's been like a day or it's been even a couple hours. And it's like, why are you upset that you can't beat it? How many, how many different strategies did you try? It could be easier than you think, but you just aren't, you just didn't like the fact that your meta didn't work. So for when it's like something for six months, as he's painting, stating, like, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's kind of bad. But then when they do do a meta, is it only through units? And like I said, if it's usually through summoning, I, I'm not that angry at it because it's usually because you can, that's up to you to realize, oh, that's a meta breaker or something like that. You have to have knowledge to do that. Or you can not have the knowledge and have someone like me or another YouTuber or, you know, the game's not going to tell you. This is, this is a meta breaking unit. They're they don't tell you that they just make the unit they know it's strong and they hope that either you figure it out or someone else tells you that that's a great unit because you can also be lied to we all know that that could happen but like, this unit is really good then you get and it's like bro why did i listen to that video i know some of you know let me know in the comment section if that's ever happened to you <laughs> where you, you watch the video uh this never happened to me in gacha games but it happens to me in card games a lot of card game people um, I hate them because they make videos and they only show wins. They don't show you how inconsistent the deck is. And like, I, I fucking hate when people do that. It just doesn't show you the realisticness of the RNG that happens of drawing a, a, a card from your deck. Some decks, if you watch Yu-Gi-Oh! vs. Like Shadowverse or Legend of Ruterra, it's big, it's huge. It's like a huge difference on how inconsistent a deck can be. Because Yu-Gi-Oh! they have Literally one or two cards can make your whole deck run perfectly. But in Shadowverse, that doesn't work like that. And Legends of Ruterra doesn't work like that. So like there's certain games where I hate when they when people do that. Really can trick and lie to you. <laughs> anyway, next question. Oh, next question, next comment. Elven Egg. <laughs> uh, one game that I play that is balanced and has been proven very sex sexful, successful because they are now entering their 16th years of running the franchise is no other than Monster Hunter franchise. Now, I want to just quickly talk about this, and this is what's really cool about Monster Hunter, and I actually wish that most games ran off the Monster Hunter system, and I actually think that they just announced that the new Marvel game, the Marvel Avengers game, might run off that same system, and it works like this. It's a very skill-based PvE game that have 
meta weapons but what makes it fun is that you can still beat the monster without using the meta weapon and sometimes the devs throw new monsters that force you to abandon the meta and come out of your comfort zone i'm looking at you altrion uh, that's just another monster in the game uh in fact i followed this franchise long enough to know that there is no meta and i tend to stick to that one weapon type i've always liked to use you can shoot a gun carry a huge ass sword be a brave paladin poking monsters with a sharp stick become a samurai with a long sword or doting some melodious tune to help fellow players knocking monsters to death at the same time you can put some crappy build and still complete the quest at a, at, a, at the expense of time or lower survival rate if you are not skilled enough. In fact, some players do it for a challenge. Go hunts naked with any uh, without any gear. Some mad lad are able to do it. I think this is what makes this game so fun and long lasting and it allows players to be creative and not tied to a meta. Now, again, like I said, the meta is usually attached or attributed to PvP, but in this game, the meta aspect of it usually is, there is a way, like if I were to show you guys, uh, I'm not digging for it, but <laughs> why would I say that phrase if I'm not gonna do it? If you were to look up the fastest clear on a monster, like, like there are people that try to find the best build, that work against this monster and you can clear it in under one to two minutes you know like or something crazy like that like if like you could kill this thing in like two seconds check this out if you do this with this and then lower your health like this and like this it's like speed running like monster hunter is like a speed run kind of game obviously uh you can't speed run a card game I, well technically i've seen people speed run card games but they more or less do it like through the story mode and that's where their challenge comes from the competitiveness you know if you, are you using cheats are you using skips you know stuff like that uh, but when it comes down to a game like this, it's it's really refreshing because he's right like you can literally use whatever you want And that's kind of what I like and I've been saying this for a while I've been saying this for a very very long time is that there is really the meta isn't controlled Even if there was PvP in Monster Hunter and, and I'll, I'll stick to this you can you can say I'm contradicting myself or saying that I'm wrong but if everyone has everything which is what Monster Hunter is. You can literally access anything. If you want a certain weapon, you can literally look up how the recipe goes, fight those monsters, get that weapon, get that armor. Uh, oh, you want to put this gem? Some of, There's some RNG drops, like as far as gems and stuff, and there's probably even more RNG uh, to some other stuff, like min-maxing, which I always say is fine. I don't mind uh, RNG and min-maxing because it's min-maxing, it's fine, whatever. <laughs> progression, no, I think progression should be static. It should be something that you understand how it works and it should be easy. But they have access to everything. It's not like the longbow or the longbow, the long sword and the bow is like here and then you have to summon later for the drum and the hammer and like stuff like that. You give the access to everything and then you implement other systems within everyone having everything and then you change things up with that. I think that uh, gacha games can really learn from something like this. I really do. I think that instead of it pit, like making it so hard to obtain heroes, let everyone have all the heroes, but then make the artifacts something special or something like that. Like, and and don't make the heroes bland as fuck, you know, like, <laughs> like, they're so dumb, they're so trash. But keep the heroes in the same cool list and level that they are, but then add another layer that that's where you're summoning for stuff. That's, that's where you're summoning to get this artifact, to get this armor piece or something like that. I feel like no gotchas really tried that. They always uh, pigeonhole the heroes and stuff like that. And then they work through the heroes to make things strong and nothing usually outside of that is that strong. And that's the, thing, the same reason why I've, I've recently looked into Summoner's War and people are so pissed at Summoner's War because they just added in artifacts, which in other games, artifacts are these really cool things that sometimes take a character and really elevate them from like, like I'm using Epic Seven as my artifact platform, but like you give a artifact to a certain character, they might gain a counter, they might gain a healing capability, they might gain a cleanse, like, that's giving them something different that they, the character doesn't na naturally have in their kit or something that enhances a part of their kit. Like now, when they do a basic attack, it leaves a debuff. And then like, ooh, now that that that's really strong for that character because they have counter in their kit. Like stuff like that, it's really cool. But in Summoner's War, all they did was add stats. Like you just get additional stats and everyone always hated in Summoner's War that everything was just stats driven. So it's just like, you guys didn't really add anything. And I think that's, again, like it really goes to show you I feel like other games can learn from other games. And I think that a gacha game shouldn't only look from the gacha. I don't think a card game, some card, like I said, card games do some stupid stuff too. <laughs> they really do, they, they really do. There's some really scummy sc uh, card game uh, practices that they have out there. But anyway, let's go to the next one. My man RN, registered nurse is here. <laughs> Hello Cash, one of the things that I think I should that should be discussed further is nerfing. I think the nerf meta needs to change rather than bringing characters down and making people feel 
making people feeling like they have lost something, slowly bringing things up to make sure people still feel engaged and excited rather than put out. I think it's like put out or, or, or burnt, like burnt out. I know this requires much more work and therefore more money, but hey, it's just MFO. Uh, I actually, I think I, I mentioned this before is that, um, if I use Exos Heroes, I do think that they're doing balancing really good. And balancing is one of the hardest things to do in a game. Uh, a lot of people do nerfs, they'll do nerf cycles, and they'll take something that's meta, they nerf it, then and sometimes they'll even buff something else. They'll nerf something, make it crappy, make it pretty much unplayable, and then buff something, and then all of a sudden now there's a new meta. But the new meta is just like another thing that the devs just made popular, and it's like, okay, I guess we'll just use that now. Now the problem with stuff like that is that sometimes i'll even use exos as an example is that sometimes when you do do that then people have to redo a lot of stuff and that depending on the game it, it might be a little bit more expensive if the game has like removal cost and stuff like that same thing in card games card games really uh i'll use shadow versus as an example for that is that when they drop a new pack the new meta pretty much comes out you have to then either if you're a rotation player which is the players that play with all the new stuff you have to pretty much delete or or salvage all your old cards uh all the old cards that are now out of the meta you salvage all of those and then you try to get as many of the new cards so you can keep up and you make things unpopular like I always roll for just buffing. If something's strong, buff something else so it's, it's comparable to it. If it's comparable to it, then people have to make a choice. And card games, again, usually do that pretty good because in card games, usually there isn't just one meta deck. There's usually two to three, depending on you know what it is. And some people might not like that there's two to three, but I think that's a good amount. Actually, it depends on their tournament, like their format. Uh, if there's only three decks that can be picked in a tournament, then you should have four to five meta deck so there's still variety so if people pick the same three there's still a possibility that someone might come in there with that fourth and fifth deck and maybe catch you off guard like how uh, some of the other people were saying like you you pick off meta to throw people off it's a really good tournament aspect but unfortunately a lot of us are casual players we're not going to be going into tournaments but we're having to deal with the online meta <laughs> this this crappy you know i just need wins because the game rewards winning and that's another thing that I, I don't think that I touched on too much is that a lot of these games reward only winning it's terrible I'm almost like getting I want to get away from like free to play because free to play just have like I feel like this weird excuse <laughs> to do slightly worse and I feel like it's it's poisoning the minds of of us gamers that when we see free to play we're just allowing certain things to happen instead of getting a good game for a decent price like <laughs> uh, it's, it's crazy Next one I want to put up is going to be the last one to go. Uh, in my opinion, who go? In my opinion, people who go against the grain or meta are often in one extreme side. They don't give a shit. Oh, one, they don't give a shit, so do whatever they want, or give too much shit, so they don't want to do what everyone is. Two, rich enough to afford taking the risk, or desperate because they can't afford the meta. Three, way too honest to copy others or too superficial so that they do something different to hype it up. Now, I do think that he's right here. I, like I said, like some people can't afford to take, uh, some people can't afford to do meta. So they literally will just go off meta, like just because they can't do it. Uh, this is a really thing where the meta is sometimes like we were talking about earlier, paywalled. It's like something that, you know, not everyone has access to. You're off meta because you, you can't, you don't want to either you like the game and don't want to engage in the paywall or you're, you know, you're just like, ah, I, I'm, I don't, you know, a lot of people are hip, hipsters, so they'll just be like, I don't want to play that. It's the most popular deck. I don't want to, I want to be the cool guy. And I, I sometimes I'm like that, you know, so he, I think, I think these three points here are very correct. <laughs> I, for one, have also often been the odd one out, whether in games or in IRL, but as cool as I like to make it sound, it was often because I simply couldn't do what others could or what the standard required. Whether it be limited resources or lack of skill talent, I had to think of the most effective way possible to maximize the little I got. I envy people who do it out of creativity as that's the place I'd like to make it make it to at some point in my life. Meanwhile, necessity is what drives my choices 90% of the time. I like this because he's one of the ones that responded to, because I did throw in like IRL uh, examples as well. I really try my best to encompass a lot of stuff to prove the point. Because like I said, I know some people are just here because they're mobile games, uh, mobile games, mobile games. Uh, some people are from different games. This happens to stumble upon my channel. So I, I like to throw in as many examples from as many different games that I think that can make sense. And I also th try to throw in IRL examples. Like I threw the meta of like 
working a, a stable job, you know, stuff like that. I threw those in there as well. So this also encompasses that. Like, I think that mentality in general is something that comes from IRL and then we just, it, it ensues into our competitive hobbies, hobbies, hobbies and stuff like that. Like, I think that that ensues it. There are some people that are always willing to take a risk. They don't care about, you know, oh, I take a risk. But sometimes that person taking a risk is not really a risk at all. I remember my boy, my boy Swain in uh, Le League of Legends, he says a calculated risk is not a risk at all. Like when you can take a risk and everything is pretty much calculated and everything is perfectly fine, it's not really a risk, it's just like a, a plan. Like it's not a risky plan at all. I do agree with that. Like some people take real risk. They really have a lot to lose on the end of it. But like if a person risks $100 on a, on a slot machine and that's not gonna hurt them whatsoever, is, did they really take a risk that would, Look like they're just playing a game like anyone else is playing the game like how some people say ten thousand dollars to an nba players like ten dollars like, you know stuff like that like I, I just found it it's very interesting like that someone was uh bringing up that let me finish it off by ironically but ironically enough i like to watch people do i and talk about thinking outside of the box aiming for the impossible taking the road less taken by and having grand visions and goals and i'm not being sarcastic here either so as it's probably true in the in their context and all that does generally give me that much needed break to remain positive. I still remember the first time I heard the saying, necessity is the mother of invention. A few years back and almost tearing up because those words felt like the validation I needed for everything I've been through. Creativity to me is still a luxury, but I do agree that at least with games, we ought to have a little bit more of that freedom and maybe get, a, get to dream a little. After all, isn't make believe what entertainment's all about? awesome comment bro <laughs> this guy this guy really killed it. I, I wish I, I covered this um comment earlier i forgot how how much i really liked that but i wish i covered it earlier because now it's like 25 minutes into recording so people might not get to this far and if you did yo like comment subscribe i hope you guys enjoyed the discussion but necessity is the mother of creation like uh in invention is when people have to do something that's when shit happens like <laughs> you take someone that's comfortable that can literally like literally doesn't have to do anything. Take someone that is that that is desperate. They will make something up. If you were um, in a house and it was hot, you know, like in, in comparison to the person that already has AC going and stuff like that, that other person is gonna find a way to cool his house. Now you think about, well, he can't leave a window open and the bugs are gonna fly in. So next thing you know, he has like a the window open, but he like stapled, you know, something to the to the window, like like a cloth or something like that. And then, you know, like you know, weird stuff. I'm, I'm, my example might not be clean because I'm just trying to say like, it's crazy because like that's where innovation comes in. Like that person might've been the one that made the first curtain or, or the screen, the screen, uh, a screen door or something like that. Like it's that type of stuff that actually will make people invent stuff. Like people aren't going to be that creative when they don't have to. And I think that that's what the meta is about. Like if a person can just play into the meta, then they, they're not going to do that. But when you have a person that can't keep up with the meta, like in Shadowverse Rotation, like in Exos Heroes or pretty much every gotcha, they can't afford to keep up. They'll start to do random stuff. And sometimes they're successful. And of course, sometimes they're not. And that's when they usually quit or they'll get discouraged and they'll be like, ah, fuck this game. <laughs> I can't play these weird shit and I can't keep up with the meta. So I'm just going to switch to another game. And I think that's true. I really, really love this comment. Shout out to this guy. Last but not least, my boy, Crispy Bacon in the building. I agree with your idea of metas stifling creativity. However, in the context of gotcha games, the concept past of least resistance path of least resistance is the very thing devs want and to be honest every business strive for how do as a company how do i as a company makes the most out of my investment and let's face it mobile games are not long-term investments if i can control the demand the meta i can control the supply the banners why would i go out of my way to do anything more people will move on to the next product down the road anyways first uh, part of that is i i do think that i i have i that, it wasn't with this guy in the uh, last alive he's uh me and him we go back and forth a lot another guy that uh, comments and and i do get the aspect of thinking from the company's perspective and trying to give them the benefit of the doubt uh, i do think that a lot of people don't think of uh, from a company's perspective but i learned one thing about <laughs> <laughs> I learned one thing uh, through working, and I'm not saying that these people are young. I guarantee they're probably older than me. Um, but one thing that I learned is that you have to worry about yourself. 
a company will think about company they can think company all day you have to worry about yourself if the company thinks that what's the best way to make the most money off of what we've what we've done i have to think about what's the best way to make my time worth it in this game that's what i have to think about and that's why i can only speak from that time like if i try to speak for the company and we always think that the company can do this they'll get away with a lot because there would be no one to check them and no one to keep them in, in line when they do certain things because we would always be so understanding because if you talk to a, a company in another company and i think if you guys are my fighting game people if you made it this far in the video they were just talking uh the, a lot of the fighting game head ups we're all talking with each other and a lot of big the big one of the biggest issues in fighting games right now is like the online uh, it's weird that you can play like games like league of legends a lot of these other games shadowverse uh these mobile games you can play a lot of games online with little to no lag uh obviously different systems are, are going to be different right but fighting games something that lag is actually like really detrimental to the experience uh is because it's literally you controlling a character and if it's not responsive it's terrible so you would think that they would definitely 100 percent want to fix that especially something that's been a problem for years it's been a problem for years crazy amount of years you would think that they would want to fix that right that would be something that they want to fix but they still haven't and a lot of the times i think they briefly brought it up and a lot of people were kind of pissed about it it was like well you know we can't afford that <laughs> something that they kind of said and it's like you can't afford it what are you talking about like in a business standpoint they probably all understood well if we you know put too much money into the online some people the online is not going to last that long people play um in people play like offline offline is more something that we should really balance because technically fighting games aren't at a major scale aren't played online they're no major now there are because of covid there's no major online tournament they don't really do them like that so for it would make sense that yeah the online can be decent but you know you got to practice up and then go to a tournament or go to a local go to a major but it's like bro online is mad important like that's where people will play and actually get to practice so i think that this is the same kind of thing here is that if you talk business to business all the time then they'll get away with a lot of things but if their business talks to a player in the fighting game aspect what i'm talking about then they would realize that no you have to fix this this is something that needs to be fixed and you'll hear on a consistent basis from a lot of fighting game players that they're pissed at uh the fact that every single time that they they seem like they're not being heard or that they're and if it's not expensive they're like yo some people have seen games of a way less quality but they have better online and people would rather play that they'd rather play the game that is playable online than the game that looked way more fancier but you can't play it <laughs> you can't play with friends because of, gone is the days that you can play you know everyone's at home like people grow up and they live in different states they live in you know different countries and stuff like that like they don't have that possibility so you have to make online better and i went on a fighting game tangent but that's why i think that you can't always think of the business aspect of it because they're sometimes only looking out for themselves and you have to do the same you want you want a good experience of a game you have to tell them what you want and you can't always give them the benefit of the doubt i would like to give some constructive criticism part way into the video you use meta to define all things all kinds of things uh psychology uh, psycholo uh psychology and philosophy uh it made your point seem like uh the perfect gotcha was the catalyst for world peace or something no i was just trying to like i said kind of group things together because some people i feel like only play gotchas or they, they only talk a lot even when i did this video i had to take out a lot of comments that were just purely based on exos heroes like just like and and i also i i, I could have did it i could have been a huge dick there were two people that like really made it seem like i was this video was about exos heroes when i i feel like i barely brought it up in that video but it's 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 weird that some people when, when i'm trying to bring in other things other examples to prove that i'm not talking about one specific game but i might talk about a genre but it, it's 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 very strange uh that made it hard to understand you were still talking about a game which i wasn't i was just talking the, the point of it was about a meta that it wasn't specifically just about a game i don't want it to be specifically about a game unless the next mfo which is specifically about a game where i'm gonna directly say this is about this game it's about pokemon uh 100 it's about pokemon so everything will be geared to pokemon <laughs> uh do those problems exist while we play exos sure because life doesn't stop but it's still just a game question for you do you find yourself liking something less the more critical you become of it hell no no why do that's not just him. A lot of people think that. I don't. I don't understand that when you, uh, when you, when you start to look at stuff and, and realize, oh man, this could be so much better. 
I think some people get discouraged. I think being discouraged is okay. Like you liking it less. I think the game is still what it is. If I liked it when it was there, I, 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 it's like a concept of when you start looking into something, you realize how shit it is or something like that. But I know that these games, and I've said it, that's why I made my first MFO. And I said that I don't think that these games are meant to be good at all. <laughs> so my point of the, the games are that we can make them good if we give complaints. And we tell the devs that there's something, because I've always said on the record that I think these games are like skeletons, mobile games anyway. They're skeletons and they, they go by the games as a service model where the game can come out pretty much as dick all and that you have to then tell them what you want. This is the same issue with Fallout 76. Like that's the same thing that they pretty much thought that they can leap off the game and it could be absolute butt shit. And they'll be like, well, we'll just make it better over time. Same thing with Anthem. Anthem was a terrible example of that. They thought that they could just drop this fucking game instead of just not dropping it, making it better, and then dropping it later with more stuff, they thought they could drop the game. And these are not mobile games. <laughs> but every time that this happens in a non-mobile game uh, environment, those games get ripped to shit. They don't, they don't, the, the player base does not allow that to happen. Some people stay in the player base, they still make their complaints, they still tell the devs, hey, this is what I think you guys should do. And the devs will sit there and they'll listen because they know what they did. But for some reason, when you do it in a gacha game, there are people that will literally try to defend the game as if the game is perfect. Like as if the game is in a good enough state that you don't need to improve it, that there doesn't need to be quality of life. The monetization system is perfect enough that you can leave it the way it is. Like I think that that's just, I, I think that that's ridiculous. I think Epic 7 is in a fantastic state. I think, I think that Epic 7 has been around, I think it's two years now, and it's, it's probably been in the best state that it's ever been. But it's there because of a lot of complaints or, or suggestions, whatever you want to say. It's there because of them listening to the community over time and literally giving up some of that stuff. Like how you said here, like uh, their investment and what's the thing, the supply and demand. But they started to realize, uh, oh, the people don't like the stamina system. Let's let's get that back. Or they don't like our the skill enhancing system. Let's give them a little bit. They nudge on some of their tight grip philosophies or their things because they don't want to lose the player base entirely because of, you know, we can consider it greed, but them trying to balance out stuff. They're just trying to balance stuff. I don't think that they, um, mobile games are not a long-term investment. I think that they are. I think that they are meant to last for a long time. Some of them might come off as really cash grabby, quick cash grabs, but I think it's because I think there's an inherent thing in the mobile game community that people literally don't think that they're, the game's gonna last that long. And I think that sometimes the devs do know that. And I think that they will see that the game is sinking because they can see a lot of the numbers that we can't. And then they, they back off way earlier than some people expected to. Because some people, you see them, man, it's, it's some sad shit when you see someone that really likes a game and then it dies. That happened with, to me with uh, Evolve. Evolve was like my favorite game and it died. It literally died. And everyone just kind of blamed the devs for it. And it is kind of their fault because <laughs> they started to, I'm not gonna go into that. You wanna, that, that's not the next MFO, but you guys want me to do a um, video on Evolve? That was, that's like one of my most passionate games. I, I still think that, that was the best game I've ever played, hands down. Anyway, this video is going on for too long. That's the last comment. I appreciate all the comments you guys uh, dropped upon me. I gotta work on the, the Pokemon video. And you guys, I, even though I told you it's Pokemon, you have no idea what thing of Pokemon I'm going to talk about, so. Uh, I guess if some people know, it's, it's a controversial topic in Pokemon, so p some people might know what it is, but... Anywho, uh, remember to like, comment, subscribe, of course. We got the merch now. Merch is going to be expanded, so it's gonna be bigger. Uh, there's gonna be more products in there. It's just, uh, I'm just waiting to get more designs and stuff like that. Anywho, just remember that every day of the Cashino is your lucky day, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.